Hey guys, don't forget, I'm giving away an SNES Classic, two wireless controllers, and a book about the SNES. If you want a chance to win, be sure to click the link in the description down below. Follow all the steps on that website. The more you do, the more chances you have of winning. Best of luck! When I was a young boy, I used to play a lot of these games that involved just text, and I kind of forgot about the genre. But lo and behold, I found out about a game recently that actually features a game within a game that's a lot like this. And apparently, it's some kind of thriller horror game. So, immediately, I was intrigued. After I found out what the deal with this game was, I found myself asking the same question over and over again. How can a text adventure be scary? And honestly, even now, after beating it, I still can't believe how good this game is at doing exactly that. After their early demo version of the first story in this collection of games, The House Abandoned, which they developed in three days for Ludum Dare, by the way, was making headlines for being so innovative, scary, and charming. It only took another six months for them to finish three other episodes, and suddenly, the whole game was out, and immediately, everyone dug it. The title? Stories Untold, weaving these stories together in one small narrative. And who wouldn't? With Stranger Things making such a huge splash on Netflix, and a genuinely good remake of the film It? Throwback 80s sci-fi horror was back in a huge way. And even though it's basically just a series of short text adventures, this game takes those same vibes and very cleverly applies it onto a very interactive experience. Submitted for the approval of the Scary Game Squad. I call this game Stories Untold. Well, are, are you serious right now? You're just doing Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah, I mean, that's like one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. It's a 90s nostalgia thing. We're doing a nostalgia thing, aren't we? Yeah, and if we're being real, didn't we just go over how Stories Untold is capitalizing off the Stranger Things anyways? And, honestly, if we're being even more real, aren't we kind of just trying to capitalize on the whole new season of Stranger Things? Yo, you know what? Uh, screw it. You guys are totally right. I just got Black Mirrored. Yo, Black Mirror, another great Netflix show! Is that a thing now, by the way? Can we call every time we feel existential dread over living in the modern age getting Black Mirrored? Dude, only some people get 280 characters on Twitter? I think I just got Black Mirrored, dude! Oh, Shadow Forest loot boxes? Yeah, more like Shadow of... Black Mirrored! Dude, the NES Classic and the SNES Classic are out of stock always. Black Mirrored, bro. <sighs> Horror video games. By the way, hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of The Completionist. And today, it's the Halloween Scary Game Squad special, and we're playing Stories Untold. Let's begin. Yes! Right. So full disclosure, we started playing this game on Scary Game Squad, not quite exactly knowing what it is. Jesse played the demo and said it was awesome, and we all just kind of said, aye aye, Captain. Yeah, and if you don't know what Scary Game Squad is, first of all, that's okay, we're just a bunch of dumb idiots anyways, but it's a show where Jesse makes us get drunk and play scary games with him in the middle of the night, and we record it and put it online. <laughs> I don't make you drink. But it's true, we play scary games all the time because of the show, and we've gone through a bunch of them by now, but this one immediately felt a lot different than what we usually do. Yeah, so take in consideration Stranger Things, add in a dope synth soundtrack, and even a poster from the same artist who made the one for Stranger Things, that being Kyle Lambert, and we pretty much were completely into everything this game was doing right from the very start. Hmm. Yo, what's up, Jesse? Well, see, I was thinking, if we were each one of the kids from Stranger Things, which ones would we be? Oh, psh, easy. Jesse's Mike, I'm Lucas, Alex is Dustin, and Gerard's 11. I'm 11? <laughs> Wait, why am I 11? Uh, uh... Uh, because you kill all the bad guys for us. Yeah! Yep, that's it. That's why. <laughs> 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 
Okay, that's fine, I guess. As I was saying before this episode went to complete hell, this game was made by Scottish indie developer No Code, who all cut their teeth on games like Alien Isolation. And while Stories Untold was always conceived as a higher quality kind of game, it's also meant to be very short, which as a completionist, I very much enjoy every now and then. Yeah, and we're probably only looking at about three hours of total playtime here, so being able to finish the game on time wasn't really a problem for us this week. Yep, especially since the four of us already played it through once on my channel, and if this is like most short horror game experience thingies I played in my time, there's probably not much you need to do to complete this aside from getting through the story from beginning to end, and probably one or two slightly missable or goofy things on the side. Right, like that one time Morph Bro wanted us to watch through Attack of the Giant Leeches and the brain that wouldn't die in their entirety just to get a Steam achievement. What was that about? Yeah, Morph Girl, what was that about? Yeah, come on, Morph Girl, not cool. Some millennials can't watch black and white movies because it hurts their eyes. Don't you know that, Morph Girl? Look, all I'm saying is, any game where I can enter a healthy and rewarding domestic partnership with a naked Japanese ghost is A-OK -okay in my book. Oh my god, without a doubt. Yeah, honestly, I think we're all just having a great time saying Morph Girl over and over again. Yeah! You Morph Girl? <sighs> Sometimes, you guys make me feel old. On the surface, especially when you first get started with the cool floating objects intro, and the chill synthwave music, and the TV show style opening credits, and the almost exact freaking same red font from Stranger Things, Stories Untold does seem a lot like Stranger Things. But once it gets started, and you see this loud old desktop computer boot up on a creepy desk in a dark old house, and you get hit with your first little text prompt, it immediately becomes its own thing. Yeah, the developers at No Code have described it in the past as a compilation tape with four episodes of a now-canceled horror anthology series on it, like The Twilight Zone or Tales from the Crypt, but really, it's more like four little short games that seem totally separate at first, but slowly reveal themselves to be more and more connected as the story goes on. Definitely. And even though each game is just a text adventure at its core, Stories Untold also has pretty solid graphics and atmosphere that sometimes even help the gameplay itself extend beyond the confines of what a similar game might be like on a real Commodore 64 or ZX Spectrum. Yeah, like let's take the first story again, The House Abandoned for example. On the one hand, for most of the game you're just inputting text on the screen, but suddenly, the things you're doing in the text game start to affect the situation in the room where you're sitting and using the computer, and it gets really scary, and the themes are very meta, and eventually you go from a haunted house to an alien thing to a remote weather station straight out of the thing or something, but then stuff still doesn't feel quite right, and you start to read deeper into things, and, but, ah, I don't want to spoil it, but the story is so cool, guys, I swear. Yeah, you know, the thing you're usually worried about in a game like this, especially since it feels almost like anything can be engaging for 20 or 30 minutes at a time, is that the resolution you're slowly building to is never going to be as good as the one you're imagining in your mind. Oh my god, yeah, just look at Lost or Prometheus or anything where there's tons of setup and then the payoff is kind of like... It never really feels like they had an ending in mind when they started out and you feel just empty because it's like seeing a mascot without its head on. All the magic's gone and suddenly Mickey Mouse looking all gangster wearing a wizard hat and robes from Fantasia becomes a teen gamer named Evan who lives in Cerritos and also works at the Chronic Tacos next to Toys R Us and Panera. Man, bummer. Right? But Stories Untold just seems to glide right past this problem, especially since the whole thing's only two or three hours long max in the first place. Every single detail, from choice of setting, to seemingly random letter and number sequences, to character names, and more, not only all contributes to the larger narrative, but also gives you that super sexy feeling when you go back and look at everything again after you know that ending. And suddenly it all makes so much more sense that the earlier stories become even better than they felt when you first played through the game the first time around! Yeah, and along those lines, I'd say that a lot of the great things about the way this game presents itself to you occur in your own brain. Okay, sure. What? What does that even mean? Well, just like the stories themselves all seem pretty straightforward on the surface and the setups are all pretty standard horror, but because the game is a text adventure, almost nothing you're afraid of actually happens on screen except for the odd sound or flickering light. Oh, okay, I think I see where he's going with this actually. Everybody always tells you, show, don't tell. But with stories untold, it feels a little bit more like tell, don't show, because most of the time they merely imply what's going on and let your own imagination do most of the heavy lifting. Yeah, 
and except for a few key parts near the end, especially the lame thing where he had to collect four completely missable tapes in a hospital to fully understand the events of the story, that's what I liked about the way they made use of more modern storytelling techniques like realistic graphics and complex sound design. It's all just there to convince you that the thing you're imagining in your mind is real. And to me, that's way creepier than just showing you a CG alien walking around. Right? Even the voice acting is kind of dry and mysterious, so you can interpret the lines a couple different ways. One, are you there? Are you hearing this? Lock your door, two. Three, do the same. Like, the story is there, and there's a crazy cool twist, and by the end, you basically know everything that's happened. But because it's mostly a text game, it doesn't really tell you exactly how you're supposed to feel about it. And I thought, that was just freaking awesome. Whoa, I just had a thought. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. You know how at theme parks they always have those, like, Shrek 40 experiences where they spray water in your face and the seat shake when certain stuff happens on the movie screen? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is like the same thing, but for reading short horror stories, right? Actually, sort of, yeah. See? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I go on record saying stories untold is the Shrek 40 of books, but hey, at least you finally came up with a quote that isn't about your dick, right? Right. Hey, happy Halloween, guys. Hey, happy Halloween, Happy days. Halloween, hey. etc. This is your own Halloween. You do you, man. You make you make Halloween happy yourself. You put on that jack-o'-lantern smile. It's tough, because <laughs> I'm diabetic. The point is, this game does a really dang awesome job of looking and sounding like it's a triple A. And you actually do need a pretty decent computer to run it well. And even though some people might hate on a quote-unquote old-fashioned text adventure, even in 2017, the developers at NoCode were able to use that format in an interesting new way that feels fresh without having to give a pass for being retro. And can I just say how nice it is to talk about a game where nobody ever even came close to mentioning Dark Souls? Well, I mean... You kind of just mentioned it right now. Yeah, though. you're right. I could have just kept that to myself. Yeah, how about you save that one for the Cuphead episode? Are you, uh... You're doing a Cuphead episode, right? Yeah, f***ing probably. Nice. I bet he's going to have a field day with that one. Oh, you better believe I will. Wait, you? Why you? Because I'm going to say it's like Dark Souls a lot. Oh. F*** you, man. Hey. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, as a player of old mud games I used to find online back in the early 2000s, shout out to all of those by the way, the actual gameplay mechanics of Stories Untold were not very foreign to me, but they definitely might be a little hard to adjust to for others, especially if you're way younger than me. But really, the basics are pretty simple for anyone to understand. Yeah, see, basically, you can just kind of think about text adventures as a point and click game without a visual component. Your surroundings are described to you via words on a computer screen. You decide what to do, who to talk to, and what to pick up by typing things into a type of word recognition software called a parsing engine. Yeah, like if I saved you from a bunch of zombies and you wanted to do something nice to thank me, you might type Kiss Davis. Or, more like in reality, if Davis got scared and audibly screamed at the sound of a door closing off screen, you could type Comfort Davis. Yeah, or that. But look, using this system, you can really explore your surroundings at your own pace. And the sense of satisfaction you feel when you finally discover the thing you need to progress can sometimes be much higher than it would be like in a game with more traditional graphics, where you'd probably just use some kind of detective vision to find the glowy object or whatever. Damn, get roasted, Batman. Oh, come on, there's like a million freaking games that do that. Yeah, and Batman is one of them. Yeah, I know. Nailed it. But Stories Untold does something else cool and that eventually they expand the gameplay into a neat sort of text-only puzzle-solving mechanic as you help carry out experiments and operate a long-distance radio system. Since there's no real video component to a lot of what's going on, the game keeps sending you back to look over sets of complex instructions, which not only contain the info you need to progress, but also a bunch of extra stuff that hints at the game's various mysteries and the larger story being told between the lines. Honestly, it's a damn cool way to tell you a story without just writing it down in straight prose. And compared to the boring cookie cutter audio diaries and newspaper clippings you find in other horror games, Stories Untold knocks the storytelling through the game mechanics thing out of the GD park, my dudes! However, that doesn't mean there aren't a few puzzles that are overly obtuse, especially some of the stuff in the text portion of the alien section, which, without spoiling anything, I found to be kind of confusing. And it was pretty crazy how annoying some of those clicking on knobs and turning dials with your mouse stuff became, especially in the section with the microfiche, and especially since pretty much every other aspect of the gameplay was perfectly polished and intuitive. I agree and- oh, oh sorry, this is 
Okay, according to the script, this is supposed to be... My script's all messed up, guys. Sorry, I have an outdated version. Uh, the reward starts. The reward... Why isn't the reward starting? I agree, Davis. That essentially means that we don't really have to go into a full-on reward section as usual because, let's be real, the game only has 13 achievements, it's a very short and inexpensive game, it took us no more than 3 hours to complete, and the only thing to really warrant the discussion was the fact that there is a new title screen once you beat the game. Stories Untold lacks a sort of struggle when it comes to playing games. Not every horror game or scary game needs to be difficult or even scary for that matter, and Stories Untold paints that image very vividly. But for lack of a better term, there is no struggle of this game. It's pretty straightforward, and the difficulty comes within the mystery of gameplay. Although it did give me a good laugh by the end, trying to figure out that I needed to use a hand sanitizer for an achievement on that last stage. Something that had never been hinted at or mentioned anywhere in the game, other than in the name of the achievement itself. It took me a little bit longer to figure out than I'd like to admit, but you know what they say. If the biggest problem with the game is that you couldn't find the hand sanitizer that goes for an achievement that makes no sense as your only complaint, that's a pretty darn good game right there. So okay then, no more BS Gerard. Final answer from one Scary Game Squad member to another, what did you think of Stories Untold? Was it so good it was scary or horrifyingly bad? Me and Alex and Davis, and more importantly, the people, just have to know. You know, honestly, other than maybe Resident Evil 7 or PT in recent years, this probably was one of my favorite scary games to even play for the show. Damn, really? Yeah. Jesse was so excited when he brought it to us, and it hooked me from the very minute we started. And even though it's not like most of the meteor games I like to do here on the show, it really does carve out a unique place for itself in a genre as oversaturated as horror games. And that's a really impressive thing to do, and I can't wait for the next set of shorts I heard they might be releasing sometime in the future. Man, you know what? I'm completely on your side here. I might be a big scaredy baby scare boy, but this is exactly the kind of game we're looking for in the squad. Good story, good atmosphere, good pacing, a few big scares, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Yeah, you do. Hey, Gerard. What's up, player? Can I do the breakdown? Sure, dude. Knock yourself out. Tight. In our scary completionist squad playthrough of Stories Untold for Mac and PC, there were four separate short stories, three hours, 12 minutes total playtime, four collectible tapes, one obscure hand sanitizer dispenser, and a secret twist so, so crushingly devastating, I drank an entire small bottle of Evan Williams bourbon after just getting my head wrapped around the whole thing. Still looking for that brand deal, by the way. Yeah, seriously, Evan Williams, this is a whole new vertical for you. Your YouTube channel has sub 300 subscribers. We're just out here busting our ass playing scary games and drinking for nothing. Davis, I don't think I'm I a f man. Yikes, awful, <laughs> awful. I'm a man, f***ing! You, you, you're trying- I'm vamping on it. You're so you're, quiet. Are yeah. you trying- I'm, I'm talking and I'm louder than you scream. I'm are you- Just a quick question. Qu quick I'm question. So yeah. Are you trying to show Evan Williams that you're a man by silent screaming you're a man? No one's I'm gonna a get mad. F man. And so, after the Scary Game Squad completed Stories Untold, they rode off into the sunset looking for some kind of taco stand or burger place. The end. Uh, so maybe this is a stupid question, but what are we doing out here? What do you mean, man? Actually, yeah, like I get that we're all sitting here talking about a game we play, but like, why are we doing this? Who are we talking to? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking Halloween, Scary Game Squad, Stories Untold, Completion... Yeah, we could've just done this inside. I don't know why. I was just trying to be festive. Yeah, that sounds right. Maybe we should just go... But guys! If we go inside... Then we can't roast marshmallows! Oh, pass me a marshy. Yeah! Oh yeah, get those mush babies! Have a little mush for you! Get that mush! Yo, this marshmallow is so good. Like stories untold, I give him my completionist rating up. Complete it. <laughs> what? My dad alone? Where are you? Guys, don't leave me alone out here. Guys, where are you going? Guys, guys. Complete it.
That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let us know about today's episode somewhere on the internet. A big thank you to my boys, the Scary Game Squad, right behind me. Yeah. We got Alex from Beer Bros and the Dex. We got Davis from the Warp Zone. And Jesse at Jesse Cox with Scary Game Squad itself. If you want to check out all those channels, there are links to that in the bottom description down below. And hey, if you want to check out our playthrough of Stories Untold, you can click or tap that right here on the screen. Click or tap. Yeah, click Halloween. Bye bye. We'll see you guys. Uh, oh! 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 What are you guys doing here? We're just. Get out you of here. You ruined the scary. illusion, Mikey. We're, We're trying to be scary. We're in an office now. You everything. Oh, the prequels. Did you find that in the bathroom? Was this in the bathroom? Oh. <laughs>